Hey, it's Kelly Thorne Gore. I am a life and a business coach and so passionate about helping you create a life you love. I am so glad you're joining me today. We are going through Draw the Circle by Mark Batterson, and today is day number 39 of our 40 day prayer journey. And some of you have joined me live every single day, which is so incredible. And I know many of you are having just amazing breakthroughs. So today, I want to talk about how God is in the itty bitty details of your life. That God cares about the smallest of details. And what I think is so fascinating is that he intersects our lives with other people's lives. And I believe that's one of the power of prayer is that as we pray, God is working on our behalf, that it's not just about us. It's about how God wants to use us in other people's lives, but also in just making a difference with our one and only life. And so today, oh my goodness. So these, in fact, these next two days, every time I read them, they make me like cry, weep. So I'm hoping I don't do that with you. I think I got my crying out earlier. But they're just such powerful reminders of how God cares for us. And he cares for the littlest details of our lives. And he can work on our behalf in ways that we can't even imagine, that we can't even fathom. And so one of those is the story of Ken Gob. Okay, so for those of you who have read the devotional for today, this devotional Oh my goodness. And this story of Ken Gob. So for those of you who have not read it, or even those of you who have, let's go through the story again, because it reminds us so much of God's faithfulness. Okay. So it says a few years ago, he heard Ken Gob, who's an author, a speaker, share one of his prayer testimonies. And Ken's talking about how he and his family were on their way on a trip They're on I-75 going through Dayton, Ohio. They decide to stop at a restaurant. And his family goes inside. He decides to walk around, stretch his legs a little bit. And he hears a payphone ringing. And it keeps ringing and ringing and ringing. And he decides he probably should answer it because maybe it's an emergency. And so he answers the phone and listen to this. Okay. It says, he hears the operator say, long distance for Ken Gob. Okay, this is the man who's just picked up this payphone at a restaurant, at a gas station that his family just happened to stop at. And the operator is saying the call is for him. Okay, what in the world? I think I would just like pass out right there. Okay, and he says, a voice on the other side of the line said, Mr. Gob, or excuse me. Anyway, so... Long story short, they get him connected with this person who is Millie, okay? So a voice on the other side of the line says, Mr. Gob, my name is Millie. I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You don't know me, but I need your help. She went on to explain that she had written a suicide note, but had decided to give prayer one more shot. She said, God, I don't really want to do this. And she prayed. And she remembered seeing Ken Gobb on television. And she thought to herself, if I could just talk to him, he could help me. But this was pre-Google days, making it extremely difficult to track him down. So as she prayed, some numbers popped in her head and she wrote them on a piece of paper. She couldn't help but think, wouldn't it be wonderful if God were giving me Ken's numbers? Then Millie said, I decided to try calling the number and I couldn't believe it when the operator said it was you. Millie asked Ken, are you in your office? When Ken said no, Millie sounded surprised. She said, then where are you? Ken said, you made the call, don't you know? She said, I don't even know where I'm calling. I just dialed the the number on a piece of paper and Ken said, you won't believe this. I'm on a phone booth in Dayton, Ohio. Millie replied, what are you doing there? Ken said, answering a payphone. 
He went on to draw this conclusion. I walked away from that phone booth with an electrifying sense of our Heavenly Father's concern for each of his children. What were the astronomical odds of this happening? With all the millions of phones and innumerable combinations of numbers, only an all-knowing God could have caused that woman to dial that number in that phone booth at the exact moment that his family was stopping for lunch. Okay, now maybe some of you were thinking, okay, like there's no way that's true. And if you're thinking that, that's okay. That's all right. Um, God can handle like any of the doubts. I know my daughter and I, um, we were doing our family devotional time yesterday morning and we were reading this story of Moses at the Red Sea and she said, mommy, is it ever hard for you to believe that these things happen? And she said, cause it seems kind of impossible. And so we had this incredible conversation and I want to have the conversation with you because as I was reading today's devotional, I just sensed that somebody was feeling like God wouldn't do that for me. He wouldn't do that for me. Or it seems impossible. Like, how could that really happen? Or maybe you read stories in the Bible and you're like my daughter. And she said, well, I don't see God doing that now. So how do I know? And so we had this really honest di dialogue about it. And I want to have it with you today, too, because I think one of the greatest prayers we can pray is, Lord, help my unbelief. If this was really happened, help me to believe. Help me to know. Help me to stand on your promises. And so as we were talking about this, we started praying, Lord, help our unbelief. And we started talking about how do we hear from God? And we we're talking about these things and we prayed that God would speak to us. And my little eight-year-old, she said, mom, I don't know, like, how do I discern? Is it God speaking to me? Is it the devil speaking to me? Is it me speaking to me? Yeah, the heart of an eight-year-old, because I think all of us have experienced that before. And my challenge to her was just keep listening. Just keep writing it in your journal. Anything that you sense God speaking, even if you're not sure if it's you, even if you're not sure it's God, like just write it down because God will confirm it and he will confirm it in your life. And Rhonda said, God has done things like that for me more than once. And that was one of the things I started telling her is I started telling her story after story after story of what God had done in my life and what I had seen him do in other people's life. And you know what it started to do? Just what we've talked about in this 40 day challenge. It started to build her belief. It started to build her faith. And she's like, wow, like God is so amazing. And that is the power of your story. So Ken Gobb, Mark Batterson sharing his story. Ken Gobb sharing his story. Are you sharing your stories? Are you sharing the stories of what God is doing? Because I believe God wants to use the testimony in your life to build the faith of others. And some of you needed the reminder today that God is in the itty bitty details, that he cares about you and he loves you and he knows what you're walking through and he has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten you. He is right there with you in the storm and he wants you to just lean into him. You don't have to do it on your own because he's going to walk with you. He is walking with you and he's giving you peace in the midst of this storm. He's giving you joy where there is sorrow and he is building your faith and he is working those miracles in your life. And so two challenges wherever you are today. If you're coming from the place where you don't doubt, like you know you have seen God move, my challenge to you is share your stories. Share what God has done and help build faith in other people. If you're on the other side and maybe you're feeling a little sense of doubt, like could that really happen? Did that really happen? Then I want to challenge you to pray the prayer, God, help my unbelief. Help me to lean in. Help me to see what you are doing. Allow me to see you answer prayer. 
because I have seen God do some incredible things. And I was thinking about it. It's like, I am not sharing those stories enough with my daughter. Sure, she's heard some of them a couple of times, but it needs to be a huge part of our devotional time. Like every day I need to be sharing these stories and experiences to help build her faith and to see that if it's happened in my life and it's happened in your life, it can happen in her life. And I think one of the things I want to mention is I, God told me early on that especially my daughter was going to be a powerful prayer warrior. Before she was ever born, God gave me that confirmation. And so it's so interesting to me that she goes through these seasons of doubting. Interesting in the fact that I know the enemy wants to have a hold on her because she has power that she doesn't yet know she has. And so we've really been praying through that. And so I share that to say, maybe you are having the doubt because God has a calling on your life and the enemy is doing everything he can to seek to distract you and to pull you away from that. And so you've got to lean in more to God. God will help your unbelief. He will help to grow your faith. And those of you who have stories to share, share them, share them. All right. I'll see you tomorrow for day 40. Have an awesome Friday.